His research interests include bioinformatics and computational genomics, multi-platform and multi-scale data analysis, and integration, genomics, and epigenomics of common health diseases, pathway prediction and modeling gene regulatory networks, as well knowledge and uh, drug discovery using big data. And Dr. Shindo Hicks would be giving a talk on bioinformatics and computational genomics research and training. Over to you, Dr. Shindo. All right, yeah, sure. Thank you very much for that uh, great introduction. And uh, I wish to thank the Pine Bio uh, Organizing Committee for allowing us to share the information about the activities going on our lab. So uh, I guess I'll wait for Dr. Kasuras uh, to exit before I share the screen. Yes, Dr. Shindu, you can share your screen. You have the permissions. Uh, I, I guess the, the screen is not being shared yet. It was shared and then I think it went away. Maybe you can try. Oh, okay. It. okay. So let's see. So can you see my screen? No, we can see your video, but we don't see your screen. Okay, well, what about now? Now we can, yep. Okay, let me see. All right, is this okay maybe, now? Yeah, maybe you need to share the other screen. We see your view, not the presenter view. Okay. That's weird. Uh, so what about this? Yep, perfect. Okay. All right, so thank you very much uh, to everyone and uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to share the information about uh, some of the activities that are going on, on the, uh, at the research center here uh, in uh, New Orleans. So I'm going to focus mainly on the, uh, the bioinformatics and computational genomics research and training program opportunities that are here uh, in Louisiana. I, I would like to mention also that the, uh, we are part of LSU, just like he, Dr. Kasulas uh, talked about. So we are basically here at the medical center that uh, we are in. Uh, and then uh, uh, a lot of the information that I'll provide, obviously, if you have questions, uh, you are also welcome to reach us through, uh, uh, you can either call me or by cell phone or by local phone or by uh, email, uh, any medium that you present. And in the event that you miss some of the information, uh, you can also just Google LSU Bioinformatics and we will find us there where we have various programs uh, that I'll be talking about. So what I would like to talk about mainly is the uh, Bioinformatics and Genomics program and I'm going to focus on the uh, opportunities uh, under the three res uh, missions of the university. The first mission is the research mission um, in the basic department with the Department of Genetics. Uh, so uh, research for us in, uh, is a core mission. Uh, we also have research under the service support, which essentially means that uh, apart from conducting our own research, we also provide other 
uh, investigator in the state and also in the region uh, with bioinformatics service support. Uh, the other part that I'll talk about is the education mission where we have various uh, opportunities. Uh, we have a newly established master's program in bioinformatics, which is a degree program, uh, which essentially means that you can get informal training, say for example, through Pine Bio, and then you can also punctuate that with the uh, a formal training program where you actually uh, get the degree. So essentially, for example, Pine Bar could provide you with a foundation uh, and then you can uh, come here and undergo uh, formal training uh, and get the, uh, the degree. Or we will basically discuss with Pine Bio to see maybe how we can manage those programs. There's also a summer program in bioinformatics, so which, is a, which is a funded program. Essentially, you can, also, you can just apply to that program and the, uh, then we, uh, we will select you if you qualify. Uh, and basically you work with us for 10 weeks uh, and uh, during those 10 weeks you get a paycheck. Uh, therefore you don't have to go looking for a summer job for that. We have the outreach program which essentially means that we train students from uh, neighboring institutions, especially historical black colleges like Xavier, DLAC, Southern University and others. Uh, we also have the international program, which we participate in with the various countries, they particularly most at this point, mostly with the uh, African countries. And then we are involved in technology development, which I'll also talk about a little bit. So uh, this is a program, we are fairly a, a very new program and uh, very few people, but we leverage our uh, expertise here uh, with expertise in the uh, at the neighboring universities or uh, with other collaborating partners uh, internationally and in the region. So there is myself as the director, there's Dr. Wu, senior bioinformatician, and there's, Dr. Uh, there's Aditi Kuchi, who's a bioinformatics analyst. And we take here bioinformatics, as I said, uh, bioinformatics and computational economics the graduate students. So right now we have David Otokunoy from Nigeria, who recently joined our lab. We have Tarun from India uh, and a joint program with UAB. Uh, the program itself, as I said, is located at the medical center here. Uh, and this is our website. Uh, and through this website, you can uh, click on each one of these uh, pull down screens uh, and you can find additional information, including our publications and all the activities that we are involved in. Uh, we, do, uh, we do, as I said, we provide bioinformatics services, uh, we conduct genomic research, a lot of collaborative research, uh, and then education. And you can reach us through here. So in terms of setup, this is basically the way our lab is set up. Uh, obviously, when you sit, you basically sit like back to back. You don't face like one direction, you sit back to back. But our lab is set up this way. Now, the reason I'm showing this slide means like Dr. Kasulas mentioned in the previous presentation, uh, we do have the capability to collaborate with partners around the world. So we get data from around the world uh, through various platforms. For example, right now we collaborate with the, uh, the University of Cape Town in South Africa. We can get data from there. Uh, we do use the Globus platform that allows us to uh, perform collaborative research and collaborative data sharing. The Globus platform essentially means that uh, we can move data from anywhere uh, on the globe uh, to our lab using the Globus nodes, provided that the other end has also got the Globus node. So if you are working with us, uh, this would be the setup, whether you are a PhD student or whether you are in our master's program, or even if you are in uh, the outreach program. So uh, in terms of research, basically, this is basically the five domains of research that we are involved in, but I want also to mention that uh, uh, we are not restricted to human research. We can do any type of bioinformatics, whether it's the animal sciences, uh, plant sciences, uh, we can do. Uh, it's all genetics. And fortunately, uh, I have worked in both the humans as well as the animals and plants. And so therefore I say I have a, uh, an understanding of what is the bioinformatics. Genetics is, is genetics, whether you are working on animals or plants or humans. Uh, it's just a matter of semantics of how you can formulate the question. 
uh, that you would like to address. But these are the programs that we work on. Uh, in addition to the listed, the three, five programs that I show here, you'll see a green line showing here simply means that this is predictive modeling based study where we are using machine learning and other algorithms uh, to predict uh, different uh, uh, diseases. For example, uh, we are working quite a lot with the Alabama Genomics, uh, the Alabama Genomics Initiative where we genotype a lot of people and we are using genotype information to best study develop polygenic risk scores. Essentially means that you can we predict the, uh, the disease risk uh, of, the, uh, of an individual or how to stratify those patients. Uh, and that also involved that uh, although these are divided the quadrants here, uh, we do a lot of data integration in my lab uh, that uh, we integrate various pieces of information uh, so that uh, uh, we can improve the outcome or improve the predictability uh, of the uh, algorithms uh, by basically refining them. An example would be uh, can you integrate genotype data, for example, with the uh, RNA seq uh, to refine the predictiveness of that algorithm? So, we also develop technologies, of course. As I said, we support other people other than our own initiative for research. So, we have developed the pipelines. Basically, these are the pipelines that uh, those who are collaborating with us and those who need access to that to us through service support. Uh, I can access this. So the pipeline that I have listed here, basically, uh, they are not all of them, as you know. Uh, they, every bioinformatics question depends on the investigator, but these are the main ones. So we have uh, capabilities for uh, microarray data analysis and the also genotype data analysis, essentially from microarray platforms. Uh, we have RNA seq data analysis pipelines, exome sequencing analysis pipeline, uh, genome. Uh, for genome sequencing. Uh, we have recently developed the single cell analysis pipelines, uh, and we have developed also methylation analysis pipelines. These pipelines that I'm listing here are backed up by our publications so that the investigators who are collaborating with us can actually see that uh, we are not only saying that we can do this, but we actually have expertise in this, and those are demonstrated expertise. Uh, which is very critical, as Dr. Kasulas mentioned, that it is very critical for grant applications because you cannot just last list the names, uh, but they want to see can you actually uh, uh, do that? Or is there any evidence that he, uh, you have actually done that? As you see, these are disaggregated algorithms here or disaggregated platforms. Uh, they are nowhere near where PineBio is. Pine, Pine Bio has an integrated environment. We haven't reached the uh, integrated in, uh, environment, uh, obviously. So, uh, but this saves us well because partly because we are also researchers. We are not only like the uh, developers of the tools. Uh, therefore, uh, our algorithms, for example, can be leveraged uh, with, the, say, the Pine Bio, the T Bio platform. So. What do we do? Uh, so these are other expertise that we have. We do a lot of copy number variation, mutation profile, mutation spectrum, uh, and the mutation rates, methylation profiling, RNA sequencing, pathway analysis. Uh, so these are some of the things that we can do. Obviously, we can also do some other, which are out, uh, outside the, this outreach. For example, uh, we could do chip seq data analysis. We do a lot of proteomics data analysis here. Um, uh, because we have an, actually an active proteomics core here. So I just wanted to give you a, a little bit about it, some small demos about the things that we have done. As I said, we, do a lot of, we have done a lot of genotyping analysis. So here's an example of what we can do. Uh, so for example, we have, uh, this is genotype data from 350,000 cases and controls. Uh, basically these are genotyped people. Now, we don't have to genotype these ourselves. Basically, we can get data from public domain. For example, this data is coming from DBGAP, uh, which is basically at the, uh, the NIH that it has access. So from there, we can analyze here, as you see on the right side here, uh, we can analyze basically uh, the SNPs uh, or mutation, germline mutations. Uh, and what you see at the top of these are simple chromosomes. This is just a Manhattan probe. Uh, Manhattan probe uh, plot uh, mapping the SNPs uh, to the chromosomes. 
uh, and on the right side here, you can see the log p value. Essentially, we can and this is the threshold here. So basically, we can compare cases to controls and identify those mutations. Fortunately, this was what we used to do uh, uh, in like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but now you can do sequence-based uh, genome-wide association studies. You don't have to do uh, genotyping. So for example, here's a cartoon showing exactly what I just showed you before there. It's just a cartoon with the basically different uh, SNPs mapped to different chromosomes. Uh, and the color code simply means uh, for different gene, uh, for different diseases, uh, for example, uh, it would be cancer, uh, heart disease, or anything that you work on. So this is simply aggregating the SNPs and mapping them to, uh, to the chromosomes. Uh, and then uh, we can do this. So this means that you can also do analysis across diseases or across cancer types or anything that you are interested in. Or you can use these resources, which are also available at the NIH uh, website, that, that you can also use these resources as a reference, uh, reference resources. But I wanted to highlight these, that these are the SNPs that we are actually using for uh, developing algorithms like polygen risk scores. As I mentioned, we also whole genome sequencing here. As you can see, we work very much on triple negative breast cancer. And here, basically, what we are looking at is sequencing different genomes of breast cancer and comparing it to different, uh, to different types of non-triple negative cancer. Triple negative cancer, for those who are not working in this area, simply means that they, uh, it's negative for the, three, for the three markers, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and the hem, human epidemic receptor, growth factor receptor. So if it's negative for that, then it's classified as triple negative cancers. But the basic premise here is the sequencing the genomes of the people who are diagnosed with triple negative cancer and comparing to determine are there any differences between the genome, the triple negative genome and the other uh, genomes. So basically you can, uh, uh, you can work with us on that. Uh, and then you can see here basically classification of different mutations, different genetic alterations, uh, and basically the range of base pairs uh, and things like that. So these are things that you can do with us in terms of collaborative research. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be that you work on triple negative cancer, you work on something entirely different, uh, but we'll be glad to work with you. But this is just the functional based uh, classification of mutations. Uh, on the left side here, you can see the genes here and different mutations. Uh, for example, in this case, we have copy number variants, uh, point mutations, basically it's like uh, SNPs, uh, and then simply mapping them. If, for example, you have exome sequence data, uh, you can map them to the 3D structure and determine where they located. Are they inside, uh, uh, on top of, on the surface of the structure, inside the structure, in the backbone, or whichever way. Uh, you are studying. That becomes uh, very important for the people who are studying uh, drug development. So uh, you can also do functional analysis to look at see where they're located. Do they actually disrupt the enhancers or promoters? And, uh, or are they micro in, located in microRNAs? So we have actually uh, looked at this problem uh, in terms of for looking at SNPs, where, whether they disrupt the uh, alternative splicing, in that way we have actually published in our previous reports. We do a lot of uh, data integration on a small scale, definitely nowhere again near T-Bio, but uh, we do integration of germline and somatic imitations. So, so here we have the germline in genome that I, that I just showed, and then we have the cancer genome, and then basically we integrate that information. Uh, and then we can look at, uh, uh, for example, the genes which contain germline mutations also contain somatic mutations. And uh, for example, do the pathways that uh, control the uh, germline genome also controlling the, uh, the cancer genome. Uh, this is going to be uh, very, imp uh, very important as we move through uh, predictive modeling where we have to look at the uh, genetic position, uh, predisposition versus the, uh, the disease uh, itself. So that's, uh, I, other than just predicting the outcomes, which we do now uh, with the, say, tumor data, uh, we may also be to start looking at the, uh, how to predict the, the disease risk. Uh, and that means that the, other than focusing on the, uh, what is now called the uh, precision medicine or genomic medicine, uh, we may also have to be looking at the uh, precision prevention. For example, if we can predict genetic predisposition, 
that is linked to a disease. So, so that's how we are looking at that. We have also introduced a new dimension to this, other than looking at the germline and somatic mutation, we have also introduced the uh, 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 epigenetic uh, data there. So for example, in this cartoon, you can see here, we have gene expression data here, we have methylation data, <clears throat> and also the genotype and the gene. The, the rationale here is basically to determine uh, where the somatic mutations or germline mutations are located are those methylated regions. So that is very important to determine whether uh, methylation actually does mediate the, uh, the interactions between the, the germline genome and the uh, somatic genome. So uh, also, as you know, uh, epigenetics is modifiable. Therefore, if we could de determine that, uh, therefore uh, things like uh, studying like uh, the biology of behavior, that might become uh, quite interesting uh, in the sense that uh, uh, there are certain factors that could be modifiable factors, for example, obesity and other morbidities uh, that can be modified. And how that relates to epigenetic regulation, because we can't modify the uh, the germline genome, uh, but uh, we can modify the other factors. So that's the research part. So what about the service part? The service part basically we have various ways. We have the various models. Uh, one is through collaborative research model where we write a grant together with you, uh, and then basically we are all on the grant. Uh, the other part would be. Uh, where we basically just do a project-based uh, analysis where we say, well, this project, uh, maybe the investigator says, uh, I don't have enough money, so I can't budget for bioinformatics. Uh, uh, I, I can budget for bioinformatics, but only a small piece. And then it will say, okay, so this is a project we are buying. So for example, this could be pilot studies. A lot of postdocs and students do pilot studies. Uh, they are funded by LBRN or other organizations. And maybe we'll say, okay, just so, budget say $1,000 for bioinformatics, and that will be project-based uh, collaboration. Then there's a fee for service where we'll say, okay, I'll just pay you a fee, you do the work for me, tell me how many hours it will take, and I'll do fee for service. Uh, so in this cartoon, I'm just showing that the, everybody who does service support knows that the, uh, this discussion always happens the way by the bioinformatician goes there with your laptop, the, and the physician on the other side here, uh, and the other guys. So there's a stalemate there. The bioinformatician it wants to know how, uh, what is the objective of the program? Or what is the outcome of the analysis? And the, on the other hand, the physician is saying, tell me how many samples do I need? Or those kind of things. So those discussions are there. So on the far left here, I'm showing that the, uh, there's a table here uh, that uh, we have. So that is something that uh, uh, we want to collaborate, see, uh, uh, resolve the program before actually the project takes place. So that's the uh, collaboration. We do have other collaboration here, which is the uh, collaboration with the precision medicine program, which is also here uh, where we have the information coming from the, the physicians ordering the tests, and we are doing the bioinformatics variant calling and giving them the report card there, and then they can report that back to, uh, to the patient. So that's the service part. Uh, then we also uh, have been working on using the service part. Also, we do data mining. For example, in this cartoon here, uh, we are helping the people to uh, use the COVID genome atlas as a validation to the uh, experiments that they themselves performed. Uh, so recently, we just published actually a COVID paper on that from Louisiana uh, using this uh, COVID genome atlas from uh, uh, from Harvard as the uh, the validation uh, procedure. So the bioinformatics opportunities here, uh, we do have, as I said, the master's program here is a joint program between the, uh, between the graduate school uh, and the, the School of Medicine. Uh, it's a two-year program with 10 courses, uh, plus a thesis. It's a basically project-driven uh, uh, program. Uh, basically, it has uh, 36 credit hours. And uh, these are the faculty here. Uh, so we have the co faculty basically, who teach that. It's a, it's a basically interdisciplinary program. Uh, I teach bioinformatics and computational genomics. Dr. Wood teaches the uh, bioinformatics programming, Dr. Taylor Metagenomics, Dr. Lynn Biostatistics, uh, 
Dr. Hollenberg and Dr. Mandel, they teach in molecular genetics, again, biostatistics here, uh, and also Dr. Gide te teaches the things uh, like he, uh, things uh, where compliance. Uh, then we also, in addition to that, we have the program is enriched by bringing the external, that, like uh, Dr. Philip said, uh, or Dr. Campio said, uh, so the program is really enriched by bringing people with expertise from outside so that the students don't only listen to us, but they can also listen to other people who are very well accomplished from outside. For example, here, Dr. Jonas Omeida is the uh, director of the Data Science Service Center for the MCI. Uh, uh, Mohammed Tayun is in industry, and uh, Dr. J. Pak from actually LSU Center for Computational Biology, uh, and many others that uh, we bring them here. So this is basically to enrich the program, uh, and so that students can also discuss uh, what are the uh, what are the other opportunities. For example, under this same program, we could bring in someone like uh, Dr. Campio and say, okay, can you? Uh, for example, enrich our program by telling our students what are the opportunities outside there, other than what we uh, tell them. These are some of the students, the graduate yeah. students who have graduated. Yes? Uh, sorry, we're, we're just a little bit over time. Um, and uh, before we have a chance to, um, do you have a, a lot more slides? We, we have some questions that people have. Uh, no, actually, I'm almost there. Okay. I think I have uh, probably one slide or two there. So here are some of the graduate students who have used our program, who have graduated from our program using bioinformatics services and some of the new students here. And the, this is the summer program here where basically all the students that we have trained under the summer program. So I don't need to spend a lot of time on this because this information actually is uh, on our website. But I wanted to share with you that uh, actually we do uh, these things, and uh, we list where these students are. They have graduated from this program and where they are now. Uh, this is an international program between us and South Africa, Zambia, and Tanzania recently. Uh, so we are involved in different programs they are around the globe as well. I, I do participate myself in the PowerNet, which is part of the H3 Africa uh, training program. And these basically are the funding agencies. Uh, and with that, uh, I should I would say thank you. And uh, certainly, if there are any questions, I can answer, or maybe I can answer at the end of the program. Uh, sorry for being too rap uh, too quick on this one, but uh, again, this information is available. Uh, you are welcome to reach me, uh, even through Dr. Kasura, so through Edia, you are welcome to reach me if in case you lose my information. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Um, Chindo.